The problem with Tom Brady being so great is that sometimes people don't realize how great he actually was. Let's go! It's commonly accepted he's the GOAT. But because everyone accepts his NFL dominance during his 23-year career, huge accomplishments get glossed over. You don't even know about some of his most insane feats. Brady is the single greatest football player ever. And no one will ever surpass him. And for anyone with an argument against that, you'll see why you're wrong. This is the Gridiron. Tom Brady was born on August 3, 1977 in San Mateo, California, about 20 miles from San Francisco. Naturally, he grew up a 49ers fan and a huge Joe Montana fan, idolizing him. Brady attended Niners games at Candlestick Park and was even in attendance at the 1981 NFC Championship game where Montana threw the catch to Dwight Clark. One of the most famous moments in the NFL's rich history. Though Brady was only four at the time, perhaps that moment cemented itself in his mind forever, and maybe even subconsciously inspired him to have similar plays in his career. Brady was the fourth child to his parents and an only son. Sports were an enormous part of his childhood. He played football, baseball, and basketball at Junipero Serra High School. As a freshman, he made the Padres JV football team, but he was only the backup. He was not good enough to start for a team that was 0-8 and hadn't scored a touchdown all year. That's enough to make a kid think that football wasn't for him. But the starter did get injured, and Brady stepped in. Sound familiar? Though he played well, it appeared Brady's talent was as a baseball player. A left-handed batting catcher, Brady garnered interest from MLB scouts. He was actually drafted by the Montreal Expos in the 1995 MLB Draft. Even that's enough to make a kid think that football wasn't for him. Maybe baseball was. However, when Brady found out there was interest in him playing football for the Michigan Wolverines, he chose that path instead. An interesting part of Brady's college academic career. He did a summer internship at Merrill Lynch. He learned lessons there that would stick with him throughout his life. But Brady's college football career didn't start off with such excitement. He was a redshirt freshman in the 1995 season. Brady then served as the backup in the 96 and 97 seasons, in the shadow of Brian Greasy, who led the 97 Wolverines to an undefeated season. Finally, Brady earned the right to start and did so for the entirety of the 1998 and 1999 seasons. But for the first seven games of the 99 season, Brady had to split his starting role with Drew Henson, playing the first quarter, Henson playing the second, and then the coach deciding who played the second half. Despite the uncertainty, Brady had big moments. Against Penn State, he led his team to a fourth quarter comeback, winning 31 to 27. In the last regular season game, tied with Ohio State 17-17 with five minutes left, Brady led the Wolverines to the game-winning score. He also led Michigan to an overtime win in the Orange Bowl against Alabama, throwing for 369 yards and four touchdowns. Even with all that success, when Brady entered the 2000 NFL Draft, he slipped all the way to the 199th pick. Every team passed on him multiple times until the New England Patriots chose him as a backup quarterback yet again. Brady's first year in the NFL was in 2000. He sat behind Drew Bledsoe and John Fries and Michael Bishop. That's right, Brady was fourth on the depth chart. He only had three pass attempts, one completion, and six yards. The Pats were 5-11. and 11. Once again, he was not good enough to start on a bad team. One of Brady's best qualities is his mental toughness. There are big games throughout his career, big moments. But just think how strong-minded you have to be to endure all these setbacks. At this stage of Brady's career, no one expected anything from him. He was simply a backup. But in the 2001 season, he got his chance. 
Drew Bledsoe went down with an injury, and Brady made the most of his chance. Tom Brady, the second-year quarterback from the University of Michigan. In Brady's 14 starts that year, the Patriots were 11-3, going 11-5 overall and winning the AFC East. He threw 18 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. It was rocky at times, but the Patriots were in the playoffs. On an unbelievable run led by the 199th pick in the draft, the Patriots made it to the Super Bowl and faced the St. Louis Rams, who they beat 20-17. It was a fairy tale story for Brady. That could have been his only Super Bowl win. His career could have continued on modestly, and he would have still forever been remembered in New England and all around the NFL. But Brady's mental toughness wouldn't allow him to settle. The very next year, Brady led his team to another winning record, 9-7, second in the AFC East, and his 28 passing touchdowns led the league. However, the Patriots missed the playoffs. No worries, adversity is just an opportunity for mental toughness to shine. The 2003 Patriots went 14-2 and, and won the division once more. They made it back to the Super Bowl and beat the Panthers 32-29 and 2004 was the deja vu year. They won the division again, went 14-2 again, back to the Super Bowl and won it again. Teams rarely repeat at Super Bowl champs. Brady's 03 and 04 Pats were the last to do it. Brady was now one of only five quarterbacks to win three or more Super Bowls, including his idol Joe Montana with four. So would Brady dial it back? take the huge paydays that he deserved? No. While Brady was still compensated heavily, he took pay cuts so that the team could do more with better players. His competitive drive was a key factor in the Patriots' success over the next decade and a half. Brady led the Patriots to 17 division titles, 13 AFC championship games, 9 Super Bowl appearances, and 6 Super Bowl wins perhaps none more iconic than the greatest comeback of all time, Super Bowl 51 against the Atlanta Falcons, down 28-3 midway through the third quarter. Brady and the Pats somehow managed to come back, send it to overtime, and win it 34-28. On the way to creating history, he went back to a childhood memory and channeled his inner Joe Montana when he threw a pass to Julian Edelman for a highlight reel catch. It may not be known across the NFL as the catch, but in New England, it's known as that catch. In beating the Falcons, Brady snagged his fifth Super Bowl win, surpassing his idol Joe Montana and every other quarterback, now becoming the quarterback with the most Super Bowl wins ever. But he was still tied with defensive end Charles Haley for most Super Bowl wins by any player though that only lasted a couple more years. Brady won his sixth Super Bowl against the Rams and made more history. By the time Brady's career in New England came to an end, he left a mark on a franchise like no one else ever did before. On March 20, 2020, Brady joined the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a new team after two decades. It proved to be an immense challenge for Brady, the year was rocky for the Bucs, but they managed to get into the playoffs as the five seed. Even with that low seed, they beat Washington, they beat Drew Brees and the Saints, and they beat Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, all on the road. Then they faced off against the defending Super Bowl champion Chiefs and beat the brakes off of them 31 to nine. Brady had won it all in his first year with a new team and secured Super Bowl number seven, an untouchable achievement. There are so many ways to put Brady's greatness into perspective. It's like looking at a work of art through a hundred different windows, but there are some good ways to look at it. In 2007, Brady was the first quarterback to ever throw for 50 touchdowns in a season. He did so while only throwing eight interceptions. The only other two quarterbacks to hit or clear 50 touchdowns in a season are Patrick Mahomes and Peyton Manning, but both did so while throwing double-digit interceptions. His career regular season passing touchdowns, 649, 
is the most ever. Three other quarterbacks have surpassed 500. No one else has passed 600. His career regular season passing yardage, 89,214 yards, is the most ever. The next closest is about 9,000 yards behind him. His 89,214 yards is difficult to picture. Try thinking of it as 50.68 miles, or enough distance to reach the peak of Mount Everest nine times. But perhaps the best way to see just how good Tom Brady actually was is this. Here are six career stat lines. The first is Hall of Famer John Elway. The second is Tom Brady in his 30s. The third is Hall of Famer Steve Young. The fourth is Tom Brady in his 40s. The fifth is Hall of Famer Troy Aikman. The sixth is Tom Brady in his 20s. Think about that. The man hasn't just had a Hall of Fame career, he's had three of them. And amazingly, Brady has a career that can stand alone as a Hall of Fame career if it consisted solely of games he played aged 40 and over. All other players are on the decline at 40. Brady was rising to new heights. That is why no one will ever touch Tom Brady. It isn't good enough to be great. You have to be great three times in one life. Then maybe, just maybe, you could talk.